everyone, Nick from Vant Trading here, coming at you with another what I think is going to be unique and interesting video for the beginning of 2021. Today, I'm going to be analyzing some of what we think are going to be some of the top stocks and sectors in this year. I mean, there's a lot of question, you know, are we reopening? What are the value plays out there? Is energy going to rebound? Is Biden going to be pushing up weed stocks? You know, what are the sectors that we should be thinking about? And I want to get you kind of critically thinking here about where you could be parking your money to really get some of the best return and best bang for your buck. I think there's going to be a lot of money to be made this year, especially in some of the reopening plays. There's a lot of good value out there right now. And so I'm going to talk about what we think are some of the top stocks and sectors, what we think are some of the traps that you need to look out for. And I'm going to be talking about what I think are some interesting, unique plays uh, that, you know, I think a lot of people aren't thinking about at least enough. So look, if you think that any of this is in this video is helpful or has at least made you think, maybe baked your noodle a little bit, drop a like on this video. It gives me a little pat on the back and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube so you can get any kind of alerts whenever a new video posts. I know we've got a lot of videos planned coming down the pipeline. We're trying to get this stuff turned out as fast as possible. And a lot of the stocks I'm going to be talking about here today are going to be from a longer term kind of almost investment standpoint. If you want to know what our day trading and kind of our swing tra uh, momentum trading stocks are, we're here every day, Monday through Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern with our podcast. And we talk about that ad nauseum on those shows. So I kind of want to stray away from that stuff for this. And I want to be talking about more value and longer term plays. So first things first, let's dive on into it. I want you to remember that, look, this is not an exhaustive, I am buying this, 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 and this list. This is not a list of all of my holdings going into this year. This is just really me trying to help you see how one might find unique opportunities in the marketplace. I want you to start thinking critically. I want you to start thinking, oh, so, you know, he thinks that this sector is going to be well because of this, this, and this. That's an interesting thought. Maybe I'll kind of take that and apply it here. That's where I'm trying to really get your mind going. Now, this is not a cookie cutter list for other for everyone and every trader out there. We all obviously have different trading strategies, time horizons, risk appetites, our desired return, how much money you have. So a lot of this changes for everyone, but this is really to help kind of get you to understand how a hedge fund might start deciding on what they want to park their portfolio into this year. And like I said, I'm doing this to try to get you into the right mindset going into this year. There's going to be a lot of, of money to be made this year in investing and in day trading and in value plays. And I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity. And as always, I want to remind you, no one knows where the market is going to go. No one, not me, not you, not the talking heads on CNBC. I don't care what they say. No one knows where it's going to be. The trick is to build a plan and to build a plan that gives you an edge. And then once you build that plan, you must follow that plan. If you don't follow your own plan, if you ignore your stops, ignore your entries and your targets, then your plan is shit because you don't follow it. Now, that's kind of the boiled down to a nutshell. What we are as traders and investors is to do your due diligence, build a thesis, give yourself an edge, and then execute on that thesis. And if you're wrong, you examine why and you adjust accordingly. Now, this is just kind of what we're talking about. Now let's dive on into it. And before I talk about specific stocks and sectors, this is what you need to be thinking about this year, because unlike this year, where after the market bottomed out in March, you really had a lot of easy frankly, opportunity on making money. Everything was so cheap. You really just had to buy 90% of the stocks and you would have made money, especially if you bought Apple. Apple always went up. Tesla, Tesla always goes up. Netflix, Microsoft, whatever. Now, you know, we think that you're going to have to be a little more smarter in where you park your money. I think diversification is going to be key this year. I think that you can make a lot of money uh, if you decide on putting your money in different places, especially long term. I think you can protect yourself very nicely and get some nice reward. Now, it's going to be a tough decision for some people. Are we still in a stock pickers market? Should I be buying a lot of ETFs? That's kind of what my grandfather does, isn't it? Look, I think you actually can be doing both very nicely here. I think in some sectors, it's going to be smarter to pick those stocks, find those value plays, find the companies that are more strategically placed going into this year. And in other sectors, it might be a little too risky or not worth doing some of that. And I think you'll get better, broader, more diversified gains if you get some of the ETF or larger holdings. Something to keep in mind for sure. Now, if you have a sector you like, maybe you like the financials, maybe you want to start looking into the sector, you as a trader, as an investor, need to start thinking about, well, what is important to me? Do I like the earnings growth? Do I want to know who has the best position to grow this year? What about companies that are trading at their lowest PE, price to earnings ratio, compared to the rest of the sector? Or is there some other factor that I'm talking about? Now, as I go through these stocks, which I'm about to start doing in a moment... I'm going to be using a couple bits of pieces here just to compare things to. I'm going to be talking about some of their PE ratios. 
I'm just going to be doing that so that you have a point of comparison and see some things that I'm looking at, especially with the S&P 500 in the larger market trading at such a generally overvalued P.E. ratio. You know, using something like that to compare can help you find some value plays. I did not pour through hours and hours and hours of balance sheets, income statements, financials on a lot of these. You know, I did as much due diligence, you know, as 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 I would. And, I, you know, I'm, I've got a lot of interesting insight. And so without further ado, let's dive on into it. And let's take a look at some of the top sectors and stocks that we are watching. And we're just going to kick it off. And we're going to kick it off with an ETF in a sector as a whole, the consumer discretionary sector. Now, the ETF, which I have above me, is XLY. This is non-essential goods and services. Think appliances, cars, entertainment. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff like that. It's mostly non-essential. There are some other, I would almost consider essential companies in here, but you know, the top holdings within this ETF in particular, you've got Home Depot, Nike, McDonald's, Starbucks, Lowe's, Target. So you've got a lot of that retail in there, a lot of that core retail, but you also have some reopening plays, uh, Booking.com, Marriott, Ford. So you've got actually a lot of plays that you can also possibly diversify within this reopening. So if you think the stock market or the economy is going to be reopening, you think that these, you know, as stimulus comes in, we, we think spending is going to continue to be bolstered as more stimulus and as more money comes in to the American pocketbooks and their pockets. Uh, that's been kind of the, what's been going on in the past, and that's what we expect to continue. We expect employment to come down as people start to get more income. They will continue to spend. And so we think consumer discretionary, yes, it's already recovered a lot this year. We think it could still be a very good year for it. Now, if you don't want to play of this ETF because it's a little too pricey for your blood, then you could start looking at some of those specific holdings within the ETF. Find maybe some of the reopening plays, get some Marriott, get some Ford, maybe get a little booking. And then you can also balance it out with some core retail like Target, Nike, Home Depot, or Amazon. Those are just some of the plays uh, within the dis consumer discretionary sector. Another one, the industrial sector. We think this is going to be a very good Biden play. The Biden infrastructure bill is already something that's been talked about and mentioned uh, with the Democrats controlling the House and the Senate and the presidency. We think there could be a lot of core spending going out, a lot of money. Um, and within the industrial sector, this is the production of machinery, equipment, and supplies used in construction and manufacturing. And this sector, which this is the ETF above us, XLI, has just finally regained its pre-pandemic levels. We are not, you know, flying off the shelf yet, and we think that this could be a very lucrative year for it. Some of the top holdings in this sector include Caterpillar, GE, Deer, FedEx, Honeywell, Boeing, uh, Raytheon. You've got a lot of different companies out here, a lot of diversified companies. So again, you can just go with a general ETF, or you could pick and choose and start looking at some of the top leading sectors, maybe some of the companies that you think are undervalued in this sector, but I think industrial is going to do really well with the Biden presidency. Now, we've got the we've got the reopening plays. We've got the economy reopening. We think that banks and financials are going to do really well this year. This is not a unique thought. I know there are a lot of people out there that are thinking this, and it's true. So you let, let's talk about some of the ways you can go, go about investing in this. Yes, you can go with the big boys. J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, they're reporting earnings right now. They're reporting record revenue. Their loss provisions are a lot better than expected. The banks are doing really well. We think they're going to continue to do well because, look, the economy is recovering. We expect money, stimulus, income to continue continue to flow through the banks and if rates are expected to increase you know with inflation <laughs> and with the monetary policy that we have raising rates would be very beneficial to the banks. So we think that, you know, the banks are very positioned to continue to benefit. And a strong market in in 2021 could lead to trading floor success in the banks. Now, if you haven't seen it, I am posting a video on our stock market thoughts going into 2021 and whether we think that, you know, the market's going to do really well, what we think are some of the factors to watch because if the stock market does really well this year, we saw the banks have good trading floor success in the summer of 2020, that could continue to bolster their income. Also, a lot of banks are starting to incorporate crypto. We're seeing that happen more and more. And so if we think crypto is going to be strong, which we do, if we think Bitcoin is going to continue to run, we have a video on that, then you know we think that a lot of these banks that are starting to incorporate that could also become more lucrative to investors. There are riskier plays. Wells Fargo, and I'm going to show you some charts in a moment. Wells Fargo is a little riskier. It hasn't recovered for a reason. There are, you know, kind of riskier bank plays out there that haven't fully recovered for a reason. But they have new leadership. They're trying to change their culture. That's a ways out. But there are some good plays within here, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Regional banks. I don't think enough people talk about regional banks. I think that there are, you know, plays other than J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs that you can be looking at. And I think that, you know, some of these guys are well positioned with good operating margin, good potential 
potential growth in EPS. And I think that some of these are going to be really lucrative. I'll talk about them in a moment. And finally, if you don't want to pick banks and you know you just think the sector as a whole is going to do well, you can always just play the ETF XLF. And I think you could get some good return there. Let's take a look at some of the charts. JP Morgan here. Look, obviously starting to pop has had a very strong 2021. Look at that nice little run we've had going from 125 to 142 so far. They just posted earnings. Voila, right here. That's that, this little symbol right here. And they posted record revenue. So we're seeing very good revenue come in with these banks and we're not even reopened yet. So you do have good potential here on some of these big boy banks. Yes, they are already starting to pop, but they're already positioned to continue to go. I mentioned Wells Fargo. We have a trader that pops in our chat from time to time, talks to us on Twitter and on YouTube. I believe it was Bravo Mo, who actually has been holding Wells Fargo pretty low here from I believe like 21 22 very you know very interesting entries and I think that was a really good play and he's clearly well positioned right now to play around with this position a little bit Wells Fargo has new leadership has you know they're trying to change that culture and change that internals yes they don't have a trading floor they're kind of the bastard company uh, within the financial sector right now but if you think that this is a turnaround story this could be something that you could still get for cheap Let's talk about some of those regional banks that I mentioned. And these are not the three that I think you should buy, but these are just some examples and trying to get your noodle moving a little bit here. First of all, Fit B, Fifth Third Bank Corp. Now, they have good expected growth this year, good financials. They have very good operating margin. Overall, these companies right now are positioned to have very good growth potential this year. Some of these have already recovered their pre-pandemic levels. That's fine, especially with the, re with the reopening still yet to occur, I think there's more room for growth. A lot of these do pay dividends, a little extra money in your back pocket, a little more growth potential, and we're already off to a good start in 2021. I think you could get some good potential here. Another one, Citizens Financial Group, just recovering its pre-pandemic levels, good strong price action. Look at this nice healthy price action since the bottoming in March. Good dividend. You know, I, a lot of these are positioned nicely. You can find your own. And the f last one I'll talk about is Trust Financial Group uh, Corporation. This one still quite hasn't regained pre-pandemic levels, but good strong price action. I believe this is a merger between SunTrust and BB&T. Not 100% positive, um, but there is some more interesting stuff on the back end of this one. I think you can get a lot of unsung potential with some of these uh, regional banks. So see which ones you think are healthier, which ones that you think are undervalued, which ones you think have a lot of room to go. And I think you have some good potential here. Now, let's talk about a reopening play. This is a reopening play that some people are already talking about. Some people might see this and go, oh, God, that's hotels. Yes, I think that there is some good potential in here. Let me give you a couple options, and then we'll show you some charts. RHP, this is a hotel resort and entertainment company, one of the top in the sectors, and you know some, some that we're already starting to see recover. WH, I really like this company. They're one of the largest hotel franchisers out there. They own like Super 8 and like Motel 6 and all those guys. They own a lot of those, which I think is going to benefit benefit from increased business travel. I think that's where a lot of these will start to pick up. Or if you just want some of these resorts, some of the larger companies and corporations, I've seen a lot of people talk favorably about Hilton. They cut a lot of fat this year, cutting around 30% of their overhead costs, really cutting down on the fat. I think they're positioned pretty nicely. Obviously, some of their nicer resorts might take longer on the reopening to actually recover, but they are some of the better ones. If you don't want to play an actual hotel, I don't blame you necessarily. There are good REIT options. I think there's a lot of interesting kind of more larger bundle options like HST. They have 80 hotels and partners. Their revenue has taken a very large hit naturally. I mean, no surprise there, but they have over $2 billion in cash, no debt maturing before 2023. I think you've still got a lot of room to recover before they reclaim their pre-pandemic levels, and I think you could get them for cheap. I think there could be better REIT options out there, but this is just another alternative if you don't really want to invest in Hilton or like some of those other chains out there. This is some of the examples I was talking about. There's RHP. Nice, strong price action. We actually got a nice pop in, in November after that kind of first vaccine news, and we've kind of seen that growth start since then. So you've got good, healthy price action, <clears throat> and we'd like to see earnings start to turn around. WH. This is the one I was talking about. We're just starting to get those pre-pandemic levels a lot stronger compared to the industry. They've got a dividend they pay. It's small, but it's something that's there. I think this one is a very strong, much stronger company, and this one will definitely benefit from reopening. I really like this one personally. 
Let's talk about another sector. If we think that the economy is going to reopen, then we'd be remiss if we don't talk about energy. The ETF is XLE. Yes, I will show you some charts of these in a moment. XLE is generally measured by two oil giants, Exxon and Chevron. They typically move in sync with oil. If the economy is reopening, and it is at some point, then we think that oil is going to recover nicely. A lot of people are already positioning themselves in oil and in energy. We think there's still more meat on the bones here, especially even if you think about alternative energy. Now, in terms of a top stock pick, I really like Chevron. So does Tyler. He talks about this as well. Uh, they're the only energy company left in the Dow. They still have a lot of room to go to recover their pre-COVID levels. They pay a decent dividend of 5.8%, and they, they said that they don't plan on missing any of the payments. Obviously, no one plans to miss a payment, but it's good that they're addressing that. They have a new renewable energy program that's set to be released, and they recently in October bought out Noble Energy, and they, you're, they're using that to try to expand their interest in the uh, Permian Basin and the Eastern Mediterranean. And after buying Noble, they were able to cut expenses by around 30%. They've got a very good debt-to-equity ratio, I believe, for the sector. I think Chevron's actually pretty decent uh, compared to the rest of the industry. Now, let's just talk about some of the stats and give you some insight as to what the analysts think about this. Goldman Sachs thinks that jet fuel demand is going to dra drastically increase, and they expect oil prices to reach $65 by the summer of 2021. The Energy Information Administration, I'm just going to rip through some stats here just so you have this in your brain. It's a little dense, so I don't, I'm not going to sit here on this one. But they expect global liquid fuel inventories to fall with an increase in demand. They expect the global liquid fuel consumption in, in the U.S. to increase by over a billion barrels a day. They increase global consumption of petroleum to increase. They estimate that the U.S. total energy consumption should increase. It fell substantially in 2020. More room to grow. The gasoline prices should start to increase this year. No, it doesn't mean you need to to start hoarding barrels of gas in your basement. Uh, total consumption of U.S. In the, of electricity should continue to increase. That also fell in 2020. And they expect jet fuel and diesel demand to approach pre-COVID levels by 2022. So we think that there's going to be a lot of recovery within the energy sector. Yes, we're already seeing those prices start to, to rise and fluctuate, but we think there's still a lot of gains to be made. You can look at the ETF alone, XLE. This is what we were talking about. You know, you've got some good price action. The moving averages have finally started to cross in favorable direction, has had a strong 2021 so far, and we're still not at pre pre-COVID levels. I think you've got some more room to grow. We talked about Chevron. Same kind of deal here. I like that they held that yellow line there. That's the 200-day simple moving average from a technical standpoint. They pay that dividend. They're looking pretty strong in terms of price action. I think this could be a good stock pick, although it has already recovered a little bit off of the lows. Maybe you want to get a little crazy. Maybe you're like, Nick, I don't want these oil and gas companies. I don't want this ETF. Well, you could go with something like EPD. They pay a very healthy dividend, 8.9% yield. They've already raised that dividend twice, I believe, and they've got more room to grow. This is natural gas we're talking about here. Their management has said that they're trying to be more aggressive with their share buybacks. I mean, this is a very decent company, very healthy, not too pricey for your blood, hopefully. And we're starting to see that good, favorable price action. We've got room to grow. And worst case scenario, you tuck this in your back pocket, you've got a very healthy yield on those dividends. So I think that's a good example. And if we're talking about energy, let's just talk about the Biden plays in general. Solar. Now, let me preface this with a lot of these Biden plays. Look, the stock market in general is a forward looking mechanism. It anticipates and it tries to price ahead of time. So a lot of these plays have already run. So you need to be very smart in your entries. I am not saying you buy these now. For example, solar has run very well in 2020. It's had a very strong year. So I'm saying that some of these, maybe you wait for pullbacks. You should be monitoring them, seeing if we get some, maybe some cheap players in the market, get a little bit of value that eventually rears its head. Some of these are not worth buying now, but they're going to be ones that we keep an eye on for sure. We talked about solar. You know, it, it's, we're very late to the party at this point. Infrastructure, still got a lot of potential there. Alternative energy, yes, we still think oil is going to be strong, but, you know, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about President Biden's anticipations with, you know, alternative energy. In fact, I believe Janet Yellen came out today and said he's, he plans on really pushing the electric vehicle market. Um, marijuana, we talked about that. It has run a bit, but there is going to be more potential if this continues to grow in the next couple of years. Healthcare, especially telehealth, some of this has run already, but if you can get a nice pullback on some of these, we expect some of these, especially 
especially healthcare REITs, could potentially be lucrative. And then crypto. Look, crypto has barriers to entry for the average investor, but there are a lot of companies out there that are benefiting from crypto. Square, PayPal, a lot of those guys have started to incorporate crypto and have been reaping a lot of benefits from that, both just in stock price and in revenue. So you could watch for other companies that start to add and incorporate crypto as well, and that would make them more attractive for investment. And the China stocks. Look, if, if President Biden decides to start removing the tariffs, like he said, if he's lighter on China than President Trump was, which isn't going to be hard to do because President Trump was fairly tough on China. And if we think that he's going to be able to kind of uh, patch things up to an extent with China, then, you know, these China stocks have not run yet. In fact, some of them have been hit down a little bit. So you might be able to get a little bit of cheap investment there. So now that we've kind of talked about some of what I think are more obvious plays, let's talk about what I think are a little bit more unique out there because there are some unique plays. And I think there are some plays that I don't see enough people talking about. First off is staffing and employment firms. Look, we're still at four times uh, unemployment from pre-pandemic levels. If the economy is going to be reopening by the end of the year, this has naturally got to drop. And if we think that this is going to happen, if we think staffing is going to go up and we think people are going to start to acquire more uh, employees and start to you know, really invest in their people, then naturally there are some companies that could benefit. I'll mention the big boy APD. I don't like this price action that we're seeing right now, a very weak 2021 so far, but this might give you an opportunity to get this stock for cheaper. So I'd be keeping an eye on this one. They do staffing, payroll, benefits, outsourcing, everything. So if we think that the economy is going to be recovering and, and employment is going to be recovering, this could be a company that benefits. It's one of the big boys in the sector. Um, definitely keep an eye on this price action though. Man, this is just another example of a staffing firm hanging out here at pre-pandemic levels. A decent 2021 so far if we can hold here we might be able to move higher. They do have a slightly higher PE than I would like, a price to earnings ratio, but they're sitting okay. And then you've got a slew of other staffing firms, PayX, RHI, Tnet, NSP, ASGN, Jobs. I put two of them up here, Tnet and NSP, just because they actually have the lower PE ratios in the industry. So in that sense, they actually might be a little undervalued compared to some of the others, and they might benefit exclusively from this reopening play and from unemployment dropping. This is just something to think about, and there are going to be other kinds of plays and opportunities to come from from unemployment dropping. Retail REITs. Now, there is going to be some risk in here. There is going to be some plays that you need to do your due diligence on, but I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity. And I want to start us off because I've talked about marijuana already with marijuana REITs. I don't think enough people think about this. Yes, it's had a pretty strong year already, so that's a little dissuading to me, but they pay a decent dividend. We think marijuana is going to be a very strong growing sector in the next four to five years. And so I think if that's going to be the case, you know, a marijuana REIT like IIPR, they own a lot of the marijuana growing and processing processing facilities. They own a lot of the land and they lease some of it out. And I think if those are going to increase in value and increase in scope, then I think that these REITs could be a pretty interesting and unique play. Something like that. Now, this next one's going to be considered a little riskier. <clears throat> Pardon me. I know a lot of people don't like SPG. They don't like malls in general. And that's fair. If these malls, you know, reopen and the economy reopens, are those are those shops, are those retailers still going to be there paying rent? That's the question. However, SPG is still paying their dividend. They're the only real estate company left in the S&P 100. They have some of the most valuable shopping center properties in the country. We're talking Las Vegas. We're talking New York, Mall of America, things like that. They have a very low PE ratio actually for the sector, 21.15, and they're actually a fairly liquid company with a lot of uh, assets and a lot of money in the bank. So look, you can still get this company for cheap. I think you've got some good technical levels you can trade off of here. $80 seems to be holding pretty nicely. It looks like around that $60 is holding held as well as we are recovering. And I think that as the economy reopens, a lot of these shopping centers will start to pick back up and we'll see those retailers start to, to benefit again. We are already starting to see retail rebound. So I think something like this that is cheap and is a little riskier to some might still provide some opportunity if you do your due diligence. Some other REITs out there. There are REIT ETFs, VNQ, Mort, IYR, VPN, industrial REITs. I mentioned the industrial sector. You don't have to play industrial companies or industrial uh, ETFs necessarily. You could play the REITs. There's plenty of REITs out there that own a lot of industrial properties and could give you a lot of return. You would have to do your due diligence on that one. DLR is a global center REIT. They pay dividends. I think global centers are going to continue to be strong, especially with people starting to work from home more. Cloud is just more and more reliant now. And you know, I think global data centers are going to be more and more important as we go on. If you think that there are going to be some areas, think about student housing. Think about colleges in general. Colleges suffered dramatically in this year. A lot of students 
students did uh, learned from home. If you think that these are going to rebound, then naturally you might want to think about something like a student housing REIT. ACC is one of those. It's just an example. Warehouse REITs, STAG, that's a good example. Um, STAG is one that, you know, it could benefit if e-commerce continues to be strong and a lot of shipping and, and trade and such like that. And it's just something else that maybe you want to think about. And I'm not saying that these are the REITs you need to be buying or even looking at, but this is just an example of some of the things that you should be thinking about with the reopening plays. Yes, you can just buy the airlines. Yes, you can just buy whatever companies you think are trading cheap. Or you could start thinking about other ways that you can start diversifying and holding different places and areas of reopening plays and start thinking a little more critically. What are some other interesting plays? Well, this is going to be an interesting one. And, I, you know, I, I haven't done super due diligence on this one, keep in mind, but I tried to be a little unique with this one. Cisco. So, look, there's going to be a huge 5G rollout this year. You're having AT&T, Verizon, Google, all of these companies are rolling out 5G. Cisco is probably going to benefit, benefit from it nicely. You do have a nice little gap fill potential there in the middle if you're talking about that. They do have a dividend. They're trading at a low PE ratio compared to the industry, 18.44. That's not bad. That's something that I do like to see. So that could be something worth watching for sure is that Cisco, um, you know, we are still lower than pre-pandemic levels. Uh, if we can see a nice baselining here, you might be able to get a nice cheap value, get some recovery. I think it could be a good year for Cisco. Disney, we've already, we talk about this a lot. I just wanted to include it. It's a good reopening play. It's a good entertainment powerhouse. They're one of the only top reopening plays, I think, of the top 20 companies in the S&P 500. Yes, it's run a little bit, so I don't like that we're kind of up here and we have these gaps sitting here on the daily chart from a technical standpoint. So if you can get a nice little healthy pullback, we might get a little bit of a baselining. I think you do have some opportunity here in Disney. Let's look at another one. Woof. This is Petco. Petco just IPO'd. Now, you know, there's going to be a little bit of interesting stuff here. So the real thought is, is that Chewy, C-H-W-I, has gone absolutely bananas this year. And for good reason. They've, they've made a lot of money. It's a good online retail. You know, do you think retail's coming back? Do you think companies like Petco are going to continue to benefit from that? Now, if you look at a comparison of income and revenue to market cap, this is a very good value play compared to Chewy. Chewy currently has a market cap of $44.6 billion. Petco's is only $6 billion. But Chewy has a $6.5 billion net income while, while Petco has a $3 billion net, uh, net income. So, you know, do we think that Petco could be seen as a good value play to kind of catch up to Chewy uh, as retail starts to pick up back up? The real question here is how is their online presence? It's okay. I think this is a place where they could really grow. And if they do decide to kind of up that online presence, if they do decide to maybe not compete with Chewy because I don't think they have the infrastructure for that, but if they do decide to at least really establish them themselves as an ease of access and ease of buying from, I think Petco could be a good buying point. We'll just have to wait and see how this stock decides to trade over the next couple of days. I want to wait and see if this decides to sell off first or if it sets up a nice baseline opportunity for us here. Another one. Tyson Foods. This is an interesting one because, you know, people were really worried about Tyson Foods during the pandemic. They thought there were going to be meat shortages and we we're going to run out of all this food. This isn't a sexy play. Let me just kind of preface that. This, this play right here isn't going to be sexy, but they've raised their dividends. They survived the pandemic a lot better than expected. They've got pretty decent debt levels. I think this is going to be a good long-term investment. I don't think this is a fast mover play. I think, you know, we obviously still have a lot of room to recover from those pre-pandemic levels. But as restaurants start to open back up, as the reopening plays start to come, I think Tyson is someone who will start to benefit. They clearly weathered this storm a lot better than I was expecting them to. They've really managed to trim the fat within the company, no pun intended. And I think that, you know, we've got some nice baseline support levels in there around 55. You've got some levels to work off of. And I think you could still get this company for cheap. Now, now that we've talked about some of the interesting plays and unique plays, I don't want this to go too long, so let's talk about what some of the traps are. Ooh, scary. And look, this isn't stocks that I think necessarily you should be shorting. I think that this is kind of, we're talking opportunity cost. If a stock is going to be, you know, moving and not quite moving as fast as others, was it worth you tying up your capital in these plays? You know, are some of these, you know, possible? it's possible that some of these plays could give good return, but a lot of these could also offer a lot of risk. So I'm also thinking from a 
risk versus reward standpoint. You know, we want to be protecting our capital. We want to be defensive. Yes, you can absolutely be putting money in some of these, you know, just be smart. And we think that, you know, you would probably be better suited looking elsewhere than some of these companies. But I want to address them. First of all, the theaters and the movie chains. Sorry, AMC. I don't think anyone should be buying you here, especially at $2 a share. They are down here and they are not recovering for a reason. They need to raise another $750 million or they have to declare bankruptcy. They have had a lot of insider selling, very small institutional ownership, I believe. Terrible, terrible earnings, very high debt, no sign of recovery. I've got friends and family that go to the movies right now. They're the only ones sitting in there right now. Their quick ratio is terrible. That means that their ability to use their near cash and their quick assets to pay and retire their current liabilities is terrible. They are very illiquid and they're very debt heavy. So I don't see a lot of these movie chains surviving. Some of them might survive. I hope some of them survive. I like the movies. But this is not a sector you should be tying your capital up in anytime soon, in my opinion. People talk about the cruise lines and airlines. Yes, there is reopening play opportunity in here, but you need to be careful. There will be companies and sectors that recover and post nice returns. But you, need, I, in my opinion, you need to be smart in, in, in which ones you choose. I think some of the companies here are positioned very terribly and you know are not very flexible, and I don't think some will recover as quickly as, as others. I think that there could be a consolidation and shift in power within some of these sectors. Maybe some airlines are absorbed by others. Maybe some trim the fat. And so I think you know you you just need to be smart and do your due diligence with some of these sectors because some of them aren't looking so good. Let's just take a look at a couple as an example. First of all, Norwegian Cruise Lines. They are staying down here for a reason. I think they're the most vulnerable to buckling in my opinion. They increased their long-term debt this year 74%. They have a very bad debt to equity ratio, small in inside ownership, and only moderate institutional ownership in my opinion. Look, Carnival Cruise Line has really bad debt levels as well. I mean, these companies could survive, and they probably will survive. But it's probably going to be bumping. If they have a delayed vaccine deployment, if we think that these the economy is going to open a little slower than expected, that could be devastating for some of these. It's going to be hard for me to weigh in on which cruise line I think is better. Uh, I'm, I wouldn't be tying my capital up in cruise lines. It's just not appealing to me. But, you know, some of these could be good reopening plays. If you know which ones you think are better positioned in the industry and you think will recover quickly, then I think you could do something well there. Airlines. Now, airlines you got to be careful with because, yes, airlines, there is going to be some reopening plays in there. Maybe you just play the Jets ETF, J-E-T-S. Maybe you have to decide on which ones you want. American Airlines is a little rough. They have some of the worst debt in the industry. Now, I think it will survive, but in, with a lot of the things they had to do this year, I think they kind of mortgaged their future a little bit. Um, I think American Airlines, compared to some of the air, other airlines, are a little more reliant on business travel, not leisure. And I think that leisure is really where a lot of the recovery will be initially. Um, you know, they I don't think they'll, they'll benefit from that vacation resurgence as much. Uh, I think that there are better airlines to be putting your money in, Southwest Airlines, LUV, maybe Delta Airlines, DAL, um, maybe some of the specialty airlines if you're you know if you can do your due diligence there. Um, you know, some of these will recover. They may not run as much, but I think that they're gonna be a safer option. Um, Spirit Airlines SAVE I think actually could be pretty decent as well. <laughs> I think there are better options than American. In my opinion, I, you know, look, I'm not a, I'm not a, uh, an airline analyst. I don't spend all my time pouring through their data sheets, but I think that there are better airlines and you need to be very choosy in which ones you want to possibly put your money into. Tesla. Look, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about Tesla. Yes, Tesla's had a hell of a year, $70 to $900, almost 1000 Congrats. And yes, it has been fantastic if you want to put some YOLO money in there, if you want to make some money. Look, I'm not going to say that Tesla's not going to go up this year, and if you buy it, you're, you, there's no chance you'll make money. But look, a lot of people know that Tesla's overvalued here. Let's be honest. They have rising competition. They're trading 18 times above the average analyst forecast, 29 times above their trailing 12-month sale. They barely make money. They're probably overvalued. They could absolutely still go up, but is it worth the risk? Is it worth possibly taking a 50% haircut on? Now, if we can get a pullback, get some cheaper pricing in here, maybe, who knows? Um, you know, it, or you could just YOLO it. You know, sometimes it's fun to put a little bit of money in some options and gamble, gamble a little bit. As long as you're smart and you understand what you're doing and you know your exits. Yes, there is still opportunity here. I just don't think it's worth it after a year like this. Uh, there are REIT 
risks. And I talked about this already. You know, I mentioned that there can be risky REITs out there. You know, rent collections could evaporate. In-person in retail is damaged and it is aging. You know, we are moving more and more online and this pandemic only sped that up. There is going to be recovery within here, but you really just need your due, your due diligence here because there's going to be a lot of trap REITs. Um, office REITs, not really a fan. Yes, they will recover, but I think a lot of people are now just going to be working from home. There's going to be no need to have all of this big expensive office space. I don't think a lot of the office REITs are going to come back. Healthcare REITs, they have already kind of run. I wouldn't want to buy them here. I'd like to see some healthy pullbacks in some of those. We'll see if we can get that. Let's talk about a couple just specific stocks. I've seen some people talk about them in our chat rooms and on Twitter, so I wanted to address them. Snow. I think Snow is overvalued. They have decent growth, but they're very overvalued. They're trading 116 times their yearly revenue right now. They are not even making money yet. I think they might eventually, but their IPO priced at like $100, and then it opened in the 200s. This is very overvalued. It was one of the high, I believe it was the largest tech IPO ever. There's no real reason for that. A lot of this was kind of hype and speculation. And look, this price action is still looking a little strong. I don't think you should be putting your money in here personally. I think it's a little overvalued in my opinion. Another one, Wayfair. Yes, online sales have boomed, but they're still overvalued compared to their growth. Over 11 times their price to earnings. They're actually having declining growth. That's not good in my opinion, especially with you know how the re you you'd really want e-commerce to hold up. Uh, if reopening continues, you know I think they'll continue to suffer a little more. I don't like them up here at this price. I personally think they're overvalued here. They've gone from twenty-one dollars to three hundred and sixty-nine for Christ's sakes. A little expensive up here, so I would not be touching something like this in my opinion. Uh, I just want to talk about briefly where do you look if the market crashes? If we do have a weak year, a weak 2021, you know, what are some areas to look? Bitcoin, you know, a lot of bullish optimism going into Bitcoin this year. I think if we're going to have high inflation, which is expected, then this could be a good inflation hedge and it could take a little bit of the momentum out of gold. Uh, you know, it's going to be hard for an average investor to invest in Bitcoin, but you can find some ETFs, some alternatives, something like that, or companies that are going to benefit from Bitcoin. Gold. Look, if we expect the dollar to weaken this year, high inflation, a lot of stimulus, and a lot of issues with trade, I think the dollar will have a weak year. We have put out a video on that, I believe, so check that out on our YouTube. But we can expect gold to hold its ground. Energy. We've already talked about this. Reopening should lead to strong energy and oil regaining its ground, and hopefully that should be able to maintain. And the reopening plays. You know, if if there's a lot of value out there, I talk about it. Might mark stock market of 2021 play, we think there's going to be a big shift to value from growth. We're already seeing that happen. I like this little quote. I talked about it in my other video, but Warren Buffett says, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. If the market is crashing, there's going to be good value plays out there. There's going to be good opportunities. So don't necessarily panic. Don't necessarily liquidate your entire life savings. Let's be smart about this because look, cash is not going to be a smart position either, especially if inflation is high. So we think there's going to be opportunity regardless we just need to be smart. In closing, so no one knows where the market's going to go or where specific stocks are going to go. Keep that in mind. I don't care what people tell you. And a lot of this is going to depend on your risk appetite, your time horizon, your investment strategy, your target return, all of this stuff. You just need to start thinking critically. That is what I'm trying to get across to you today is that you need to start thinking about these kind of things, especially if you want to invest and you want to put your money away and start trying to find some good value plays. And we need to be smart with our money. We need to be defensive. The goal here is to protect your capital while strategically positioning yourself to benefit from what we anticipate is going to be coming in the future. And I think there's a lot of value out there. I think there's a lot of plays out there. There are riskier plays that can give you that bigger return, but obviously there's more risk in there. So you need to identify who you are as an investor and as a trader, what your parameters are, and execute your strategy. And look, we will be here every day, every step of the way, talking about our trades, talking about what we're buying and selling. You can check us out on our social medias. Anything is forward slash Vant Trading. And, uh, you know, we'll be putting out more content. So drop a comment in the section. Talk about what stocks you think are some maybe hidden gems, what sectors you think are going to be out there. If you have any questions, just drop them down there. I'll be sure to answer them. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube so you can get any other alerts to our videos. This was Nick from Vant Trading. I really appreciate you tuning in. And as always, Safe trading.